Dragonman, no slaughter? Yes. Yeah, Dragonman. Okay. By the way, I see some other people. I see Scratch Point, um, Dong Wave, and all you guys. I'm gonna bring you guys into just us. I, I see you. I see you. All right, go ahead. Uh, no slaughter. Yeah, yeah. I just want to comment that we used to have a lot of efficient methods for disciplining women. I, I think that we've highlighted a fair amount of material on this stream, on this episode. The evidence is that. Perhaps that we need to go back to traditional means for dealing with errant whores. You know, there used to be a device, a device called the Branks. You know, it was uh, the, the scold's bridle. Mm. Have you ever seen this? Right? Yes. They, would, they would put this device on a woman's head, you know, <laughs> and it would, it would spike on her tongue. And then she would have to walk around drooling, right, all around the village, you know, and they would, they would put her in the stocks so that she could perhaps be buggered by random strangers if people didn't look <laughs> after her. And the, one of the best tools was the stool of repentance. You know, it was a Presbyterian thing where they would place a woman who had committed any sort of moral infraction on a stool in the middle of the congregation. Everyone, what she was guilty of. And it was very, very frequent, actually, that a woman that was placed on the stool of repentance would kill herself in shame afterwards. And I think that we just need to perhaps, you know, bring back coverture, right? The, the, mm -hmm. the old legal frameworks had women as the property first of their fathers and then of their husbands. And I, I think that this is the proper way for civilization to treat women. Now, you think this would, this would bring things back in line real quick? I think that because women are so shameless these days, I think that we'll definitely need a degree of extreme physical discipline. But I think that perhaps in, in four weeks, I think that give, it, give me power, and in four weeks I will have women in line again. I, 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 really think, I really think that they will respond very quickly to any sort of public physical discipline. Now... What do you think about this? I don't know if you saw the, the, the part of the program, but this, this big bitch standing in Times Square, what, what would be the answer for a woman like that? Here's the real tragedy, right? Every, every obese whore is a woman that could have been beautiful if any single man thought about her enough to lock her fat ass in a cage without food, right? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I mean, in this case, uh, usually I might shirk away from that strong of a uh, prescription, but in this case, I think maybe, yeah. I mean, this is a woman that any sane civilization, get her in a nunnery or something. <laughs> you know, this is a disgusting fat whore, and this is the real tragedy, right? In previous civilizations, we'd have all these people that couldn't fit into civilization, and we'd put them in like monasteries. And nunneries, you know, instead of like them being just disgusting, <laughs> Se separate them out from society. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we can't let you put up your example for everybody else. You have to go over here, and yeah, read yeah, read the Bible for thirteen hours a day. Yeah, we we can't we can't have this. Yeah, and it's and it's not just women. I mean, men too, right? Like, think about how many men are going to masturbate in their parents' basements to anime until they're forty, instead of like writing ecclesiastical treaties in some monastery somewhere, right? Like, we've, we've been generally robbed as a civilization. <laughs> Fruits of these people's labors when they're put to the whip and put in the hands of a stern ecclesiastical authority. Like, it's, it's just not fair. It's not fair to the people. Think of know? all the knowledge we've lost. You know, you could probably get it um, going, and if you give it, like, uh, a diet, like a quippy diet name, like the, the medieval diet or something, and people um, run with it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Make a yeah. listicle, a listicle to promote. <laughs> if you do it that way, it'd be like the hot new thing. <laughs> Once you go weave, you can never leave. <laughs> uh, by the way, weave. What, what did you think? I don't know if you saw the uh, the beginning of the show where I talked about uh, my, my cooperation with the BuzzFeed article. Didn't didn't go quite to plan. I, I guess that's not a surprise. Um, what, what do you think about talking to journalists in general? Very risky thing. I think it's sort of like talking to the police at this point. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not a good thing to do. Um, I think we're past the point where, where people have been using the media as a tool, right? 
especially like a few people have been really good at using the media and sort of with pure contempt to that. that Anglin is especially good at this and he never gives interviews, right? And like, it's the same with me. You know, I've got a lot of press coverage. It's generally been beneficial. Um, if you are going to cooperate media, then you need to set up media that works in your favor. And uh, like, for example, there's a couple documentaries about me. Film documentaries. Uh, there's one, The Hacker Wars, and there's another, Troll Inc., that just came out. And there's generally favorable pro-weave, pro-trolling propaganda. And audiences receive them well. And Hacker Wars, I think it got translated in like over a dozen languages, and it's been seen at least 45 million times all around. Oh, so, you know, it's... um. It, it did pretty well, and I picked, you know, I very carefully picked, uh, m like, media that was funded by, uh, you know, people with a vested interest in, against the United States government, you know, against the U.S. deep state. And I think lately, people that, you know, haven't really, see, like, thought about what they're trying to accomplish when they interact with the press, right? And now, now I just tell them to, like, in an hour i'm like if you want to talk to me you can pay six thousand dollars an hour and like yeah like otherwise i'm not fucking i have no incentive what why why should i talk to you right like that's that and that's the reality is that what incentive do i have to talk to the press they're trying to get a hold of me all the time like i receive you know they're like oh we want to make a feature in rolling stone about you oh like new york times journalist is hitting me up right now and i'm like why what why what incentive do i have to talk to you what what am i trying to accomplish what can you offer me and they, they of course don't have an answer to that question Who do you yeah so basically you're saying you need to have a game plan going in don't just talk to these people on some you know half-baked thought or you just want to get your sod out there or whatever look i'll at tell you this yes. i'll tell you this i've been on you know somehow involved with every site that has ever had any significant amount of traffic in sort of the, the internet meme lulls, you know, troublemaker space, right? Like I've had my fingers in every one of those pies one way or another. Now, not once in history has press ever been a traffic driver. This is not how you build an audience, right? Like it never has been. Uh, audiences are built, recurring audiences are built by good content that people want to read or they want to listen to and view and they're gonna come back a second time. Never once has any of these super successful sites who have got a ton of press co coverage, never have they ever seen a single blip from any given media appearance. And generally, the more contempt they treat the media with and the more they refuse to give the media interviews, the more press coverage they get. Because they're like a little bit elusive and it's like, oh, enigma, I guess. Yeah, uh, uh, so. There's just no benefit. The, the, the real benefit, if you want to make waves in the world, is to do something that they can't ignore, but you should never really watch while you're doing it. You should never wait. Wait, you should never what? You cut out a little bit. Don't talk to journalists while you're doing something that the world can't ignore. You know, just totally ignore these people. All right. Thank you. So you got any other thoughts? He said Sam Hyde was on the verge of suicide. Too. Yeah, I, I saw I that know. comment. I, 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 I didn't get that. These people... These anti-Sam Hyde shills, they're ridiculous. I, I've talked to Sam Hyde recently. Uh, he's doing very well. His video output is great. Did you see the last, the Crush 5000, where he went to all the fucking gook massage parlors and started filming and these fucking, these oh, fucking, no. scared, these fucking gook women were like freaking out. What you doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's funny, dude. Like that, that to me is the prime Sam. The Sam that's like, going to, into spaces that belong to other people and making them uncomfortable in their own space, right? Like, like every great Sam Hyde thing, you know, the one where he reads off the homosexual statistics at like the hipster Brooklyn comedy thing, the, uh, the inconvenient anime, the, the TED talk, right? This is the, what Sam excels at doing, is he's going into spaces that belong to other people and making them uncomfortable about it. And that's really mm -hmm. the peak Sam, you know, this is, this is Sam Hyde approaching a new golden age of comedy. It's and funny. just this, the, these, these disgusting, despicable shills. We know who they work for. And you know what? We're coming for you. We're coming <laughs> for your children. Dan Teak says, where's Sam putting out content now? 
he's on Gumroad ever since he got suspended. Yeah, that's what this is. Outlet. So you gotta you gotta subscribe to Sam Hyde, you goddamn penny pinching blue magic player. <laughs> <laughs> Give up a little piece of your mana supply every month, and you can it can get you Sam that land. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir, for joining us. I appreciate it, man. Hell victory. Thanks, buddy.